Before I close, something happened a couple weeks ago. I had a conversation with one of our small business members, and it was Annette uh, with A&D Quality Construction. And I hate to put you on the spot, um, but it was regarding a, a project. I'll be as general as I can. Um, but in our discussion, you had identified why you thought it was important to have EIW uh, around. And I'm, it meant so much to me, and you don't have to say it word for word, but you know, to me it really kind of sums up why you know, I'm donating my time and these people are donating their time. And I really would like to hear it from right out of a small business's mouth. So can you tell me, in your opinion, why we should even exist? Well, to make a long story short, um, we've been in business approximately 21 years, and 21 years on the private side, on the private side. So we ran and um, are running a successful business on the private side. So when the work um, got a little bit slower on the, on the private side, actually kind of went away on the private side because we're developers. So we would build houses and you know develop projects we switched and changed our channel of business from the private side to the public side. So in our minds, we were prepared to handle public work. Why? Because we've been in business for 21 years, right? Well, it's two different worlds, two different, two different animals all together. And so I was sharing some things with um, Dan as far as the smaller business, even though you have been in business for 21 years, if you do not have that public experience, it's like starting a brand new company. And so you're going to need some mentoring, you're going to need some help, you're going to need some understanding, you're going to need some pieces to your puzzle, some players to your team to be able to come back and to obtain this work that is on the public side. It all sounds pretty, it all sounds good, but when you get to the real deal, you really start understanding how it all works. Yes, one of your pieces to the puzzle, you're going to need funding because if you have no working capital, you don't, you don't have a business. You can't run a business without money. And so if you don't know, if you don't estimate correctly, you, you can lose on a job. And so it's just all these components, you know, we're quick learners. Yes, we've been in business 21 years. Yes, we've done okay. But you're going to need EIW companies like this to help mentor the smaller business or non-experienced public work business. Uh, so yes, everybody's reaching for minorities, but then the minorities have to be ready. So when that opportunity um, meets preparation, it's gonna equal that success. Thank you, thank you. Lynn, please. Yeah, um, I'd like to also echo what uh, Annette said about public works. Uh, I'm a private sector contractor, uh, but I was in the um, public sector when things were good, when they were looking for us and teaching us and negotiating with us. And, and if you don't know the difference in these two worlds, now I'm a private sector contractor where I get most of my money up front. I've never right. put any of my money in nobody's jobs, right. period. You know, But I'm coming back to the public side now because the public side is looking for qualified minority companies are looking real hard. Their numbers are down way low. So they're doing things to try to bring back their handles quicker. They got prompt payment. Uh, you can give them 2% discounts. And I just got to do a project with the city. I got paid in one week. You know, but Annette, I mean, you know, may not know that. So right. she can learn that from me now, the things that can get cash flow to you sooner. And what Kathy said earlier today is these set-aside programs back in the past when I came up, which I wasn't in too, too much, because I did have mentors. People were in business teaching me. I've been mentored by some of the bigger contractors in town, and that's where I got my experience at. Otherwise, you learn it through hard knocks, and it just won't last. So I'd like to echo what Kathy said about these set-aside programs, that in my mind, a lot of them didn't work because it was kind of like it kept you here and you right. stayed there. And then most of these folks would put you on the jobs, use your minority status, and then never take you to the private side, just keep you on the public side. And at 10 years or 15 years later, you're still in the same spot. You haven't learned how to do it. And so we need to be looking for a hand up, not a hand out. And we need to be learning what we need to do to be a business owner. I mean, we don't need nothing uh, but ourselves and the information so we can perform. So, you know, uh, something like ABC, what Kathy has said, they're really sincere about that. 
Uh, I've been associated with ABC, I don't know how long. We're not going to talk about it. Okay, we're going to talk about it. You know, I just want to echo that they're really sincere about that because they've sent me to college. I've been to the University of Washington on their dime. You know? That was our said, national grant, was to, was to pick some, some likely victims and send them to the New <laughs> victims. And that, you know, when you get into some of those rooms and you start talking to some of these entrepreneurs and talk to people, that's where you get that experience. You can ask those kind of questions. So, you know, we really need a place, something like EIW, so you can ask these questions, uh, talk to these people, use these resources. So you don't learn everything on that job that affects your pocketbook. Because a lot of times, if your pockets are low, that thing you learn may put you out of business. Before we uh, break, uh, I have two comments. Sincerely, I'd like to advise you to do something about it, okay? Uh, I've been associated with the uh, uh, Dan, I think, uh, about a year. And uh, I'm not the uh, construction contractor at all. I have developed my own market niche for the service uh, business, okay? I do uh, like the uh, waste management type of business, I mean, so, which is very unique and uh, has nothing to do with the construction business. And uh, since I got involved with the National Minority Contract Association, I spend a lot of my own personal time and money to try to develop a good program to benefit the, uh, uh, the what call, uh, minority people. And I'm 72 years old. I don't need the money. I don't need the growth. However, I haven't received a million times in what I have been given. I came here to this country in 1960 with $50. And I graduated from two universities. I speak pretty good English, right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I don't have any communications. So I'm self-made, what you call uh, the, the business, OK? And uh, so. Since I met the, uh, uh, the uh, Dan, uh, Dan Seidel, I said I'm going to dedicate it to the next several years uh, to give, uh, what do you call, uh, all, uh, a lot of things I know and to, uh, what do you call, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, my knowledge and wisdom to them, right? So that's how I'm dedicated, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, I have seen a lot of general contractors come to our meeting, it's like Morton's, uh, Centennials. Uh, they pray themselves around how they grade they are. I'm sorry to say that, but I try to say uh, what do you call uh, the what do you call uh, the out of my bottom of my heart, okay? Mm -hmm. What uh, you minority, you have to have your own big what do you call the uh, general contractor, uh, the what do you call uh, license business, mm -hmm. and unless you have that, you're going to be enslaved to the system. You're not going to be come out of it. You know, you work as 26, I don't know, 30 years. What do you call the uh, 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 private and, and uh, the what do you call it, private sector? Mm -hmm. Do you have a two million dollars in your bank account? I don't think so. <laughs> but you made billion dollars to what do you call it, PCL or this kind of you know big contractors, right? They they know how to play the games, okay? And then in order to we have uh, this is a very sincere, but then your mission today, I'd like to ask you to do. Whether you get the, what do you call uh, get, get our cameras. Yeah. <laughs> you get the grant from federal government or state governments, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, create the one minority, what do you call the general contractors, okay? Mm -hmm. So they can hire small, uh, the, uh, uh, the minority subcontractors, okay? Unless you do that, you're going to be same situation you in Martin Luther King said, I have a dream in uh, what do you call uh, Washington DC, okay? And this is a nice exercise. And I want to ask you to not, the, he said about the, what you call, uh, the mental program, right? Mm -hmm. He got very successful, uh, what you call a uh, resort, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to go to all this biggest, what you call uh, the, uh, the national uh, the uh, contractor here, right? Ask them, demand them, bring in one minority subcontractor as uh, their what do you call, under their wing. So teach them and foster them, okay? And then we have a 10, what do you call, the, uh, the big general contractors, and they take in, you know, what do you call, a cement, right? Uh, what do you call, electrical, 
you know, every trade uh, mm. we can conceive, right? Mm. Then these guys have uh, the sufficient training, sufficient what call, management, uh, what you call, know-how, right? Mm -hmm. You can form nice, uh, what you call, general, what you call, uh, contractors and business, okay? Mm -hmm. Not to compete like a Mortensen or PCL, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, but uh, unless you have, uh, what you call, small, uh, the word minority general contractor, right? You're not going to, the, you folks, you're going to stay the same. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 20, 20, 20 years ago. Amen. Okay? Okay. Yeah. okay? And yeah. seriously, <laughs> seriously, we need what he told. The doctor here, <laughs> he's a smart guy. The lady, ABC lady, smart lady. I think uh, they, they're here to try to help us, right? Let's work with this, the, the, what do you call, the, uh, the white people here. <laughs> OK? No, I'm not saying it. Let's, let's empower ourselves from, uh, what do you call, uh, the getting the wisdom from, uh, the, from him, OK? Exactly. And then some help from Mortensons, right? Have the, what do you call, the, uh, the, what do you call, the uh, mentor programs, OK? Unless we do go that way, we're not going to move for, uh, move forward, okay? Would you? That, that is uh, my what you call a sincere wish. Because it's not going to benefit. How many years I can live? I'm seventy two years old, right? And Well uh, you better be around a little longer. No, no. <laughs> so uh, you got some seventy year olds on the board, I'm not gonna you, you <laughs> So you guys right? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, this is a doctor, good doctor, right? We need you help. <laughs> we need a prescription. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, on that note, now James, you know, and I, and I, th I want to, I want to be clear. You know, the, the focus of, of EIW is, is small business. It, it is small business. Uh, my interest in my work over the years has really been in support of small businesses. However, those small businesses has also represented minorities and women. So my focus really has, has not changed. I'm still very focused on small business. But I do realize that minorities and women businesses have had some, some challenges, as, as all of my small businesses have had challenges. So in light of the, the dialogue that uh, you just provided us, and thank you very much, James, for your, your honest uh, feedback on that.